Hey, what's going on everyone? Mike here in the BFH garage. We're going to tackle this 8.8 .8 for a reed gear. It already has an ARB locker installed. Um, he's just going to larger tires, so he needs some new gears. I'm going to show you how to do it. First thing we need to do is get the axle shafts out, brakes off, all that stuff, get it ready to go. It's like any C-clip axle, we need to get the cross pin out first before we can push the shafts in to get the C-clips out. So on the ARB, you have the cross pin retaining uh, pins right here. So you just got to get those out first. With the cross pin out, now you can just take a magnet. You have to push your axle shaft in to get the C-clip to drop. Take your magnet and you can squeeze it right out of there. Same thing for the other side. That one already fell. Magnet comes out. Now your shafts are ready to come out. I pulled my ARB copper line out of the bulkhead fitting. Um, now all we need to do to, to remove the carrier is to remove these four bearing cap bolts, pull the bearing caps, and you should have to pull this out. Understand that sometimes people don't put enough preload on these things, or once the bearings start to wear in, the preload becomes significantly less, which means once you pull those four bolts, this carrier could drop right out in your lap. So you need to be careful, have a hand on there uh, just in case it wants to fall out on you. Um, the other thing I wanted to make a point of is the bearing caps are going to be side specific and they need to be oriented in the correct way. So if they are not marked, what you can do is you can take a punch and put one punch on the housing here, one punch on the top of the bearing cap here, two punches over here, two punch marks over here, and that'll um, specify which side the bearing caps go on as well as the orientation because they do need to be up and down in the right spot as well as side to side since they are machined with the housing. Well, I can see this carrier is already loose. I don't have to do anything. There's hardly any preload on that, so I'm going to make sure I keep a hand up here. I think it would have fell right out of my lap. I'm going to keep the uh, master shim side to side. That way I have a good starting point. Oh, these things are freaking heavy. There we go. All right. Now I got the uh, pinion out and we'll go from there. So to get the pinion out, just remove the pinion nut. I leave it on a couple threads. Then you can punch it out with a hammer. That way it doesn't go spitting out the backside. Hold it, remove the nut, remove the flange, and out she'll come. After you get that out, we need to remove the pinion seal. And you could do that a number of ways. You can use a, a seal puller like this, or you can get a screwdriver, start caving the seal in on itself, it'll eventually pop out. Seal pullers are nice. They get in there and they just pull it out just like that. You want to pull out the baffle, the tail bearing, and then all we have left are the races. We need to punch those out from both sides. Punching out the race is real simple. If you look inside here, you're going to see this little lip on the race on the inside. You want to take your punch on the back side of this and work your way around the race until it pops out. And I'll show you how that works. You can small punch, you can use whatever. I use this big old honker right here, it takes them right out.
coming back to this side now, you'll see the race on the back side here. So there's the lip I need to get. Take that, put it right there. So once you have all the innards out of there, spray it down real good with brake clean, get it really cleaned up in there, get the bolt holes all cleaned up. There's a bunch of gear all to get back in there. All right, so I have the new ring gear in the oven ready to go. In the meantime, we're gonna take the ring gear off of this. So after you finish getting the ring gear off, you need a clamshell puller if you have an ARB to get that seal housing off because it's below the bearing and you have to take it all off at once. Now you need to be careful here. And you'll see what I did is I put the clamshell on, but I don't close it all the way so that way you don't damage the copper line right there. So that's all you can do. Let's see if we take this thing off. Just like that, seal housing in the bearing comes off. So if you're running an ARB, the seal housing here, the bearing fits inside there. It's kind of a press fit. I wouldn't call it pressed on, but it's a press fit. So you need to get the old bearing out so you can put the new bearing in. And the best way to do that is to take it to a vise and barely, you know, um, all you gotta do is keep it around that edge there and you're gonna take a seal driver that fits right in there and you're just gonna slowly tap it and that bearing will fall right out. You just want to get it the width of the seal housing. You don't want to crank on this. You just want to leave it just like that. As long as it catches those two lips, you're all right. Your bearing pops right out. So if you have an ARB, this would be a great time to replace these O-rings. You have the two O-rings in there. Pull them out and replace them. This thing's such a pain in that, but once you get this thing pressed on, you're not gonna gain access to them again without a clamshell puller. So, you know, for the few bucks it costs for new O-rings, it's just better to put new ones in there. Make sure that your new O-rings match up your old ones. And also, when you go to put these in, put some gear oil right between your fingers there, slide around, get it lathered on there pretty good. That way these things aren't rubbing dry and uh, they go in a lot easier. Ding, ring gear is out of the oven. Make sure before you put Loctite on your ring gear bolts, you clean them down with brake clean real good. That way the Loctite has something to stick to. Same thing with the actual ring gear. So that way um, they don't come loose and you end up getting bolts stuck in your pinion somewhere down the road. That has happened. Ooh. So the whole purpose of putting it in the oven is the ring gear will expand with heat. Metal expands with heat 
and you don't have to suck the ring gear onto the carrier or the locker in this case because um, sometimes you won't get it to set completely right. If you put it in the oven, it heats up, it expands, and it slides over and then uh, cools down right perfectly in place. Make sure you torque these down to spec. I'll snug them down with the impact first, and then I'll mark each bolt and torque them down. With the ring gear on, now it's time to press the bearings on. And you want to do this in a specific order so that way you don't end up damaging the seal housing. So what I'll do is I'll take the non-ring gear side over here, put that bearing on first, then I'll flip it over, and then I'll put on the seal housing so that way I can make sure this goes on the way I need, need it to go. So when you do that, don't forget you have your O-rings in here, so when you put this on here, you want to twist it on. You just don't want to push down because those seals can get kind of bound up so you want to twist back and forth until it goes on the whole way make sure you have a good uh, fit right there and then um, when you're done with that you're going to take this bearing put it on there you're going to press this bearing in place till it hits the journal it'll stop then you're going to take the race and you're going to tap the race around it until it fits all the way over the cone so that's the way that goes let's go get these pressed on So we have the bearings all pressed on the um, carrier or the locker in this case here. Um, one thing you need to be careful of, or not careful, it's just something you have to look for. Um, before you go do your final setup and go install your axles, your shafts, you need to make sure that your cross pin can slide in without interfering with the uh, tooth here. I'm not sure if you can see that. I don't want to damage that copper line though, so I have to leave it off the table a little bit. But you see where the cross pin goes through here, this tooth is going to interfere and not let this cross pin in. So uh, it's very common this happens when you get um, uh, deeper gears, they get a little bit thicker. So you're going to have to shave off part of that tooth, just enough to get the cross pin in. And that's nor perfectly normal. Shave that down and then make sure your cross pin fits before you go to do a final setup. Now with that... Um, out of the way, next thing we need to do is we need to press on our bearing on our pinion gear. And I'm going to start with the original pinion depth shim that we had. So I'll throw that on there, I'll get the bearing pressed on, and uh, then we'll get that other uh, race put in the housing and get those all set and then we can start doing some setup. All right, the last thing we need to do before we start our initial setup, make sure we wipe out these uh, bearing race seats really well because we have to seat our races. We're going to do that now. On a normal uh, axle install, I would probably use a setup race in here, but because I have that clamshell puller and the shims they gave me for pinion depth go between the pinion head and the, uh, and the bearing, I'm gonna have to do it that way. So otherwise I might use a uh, setup bearing instead, but this is what I got, so this is what I'm gonna do.
Okay, quick recap of what we've done so far. We've pulled the axle shafts, brakes, all that stuff off. We've removed the ARB air locker. If you're doing a regular 8.8 .8 with a normal carrier, you're not gonna have to go through the same process as the ARB as far as removing the airline and all that. But everything else, including the gear setup, is gonna be virtually identical. So, um, so far I've got the new races pressed in on the tail bearing side and the pinion head bearing side. So all of that's done. The entire housing's cleaned out. And because we're doing an ARB, I wanna make sure that we have our drainage slots here. Um, those are already there, so we didn't have to modify the housing for that since those are already there. We already have the ring gear um, put on the locker. We have the bearings pressed in place, which on the 8.8 .8 includes the seal housing. And we have the bearing, the uh, pinion head bearing pressed onto the pinion. So now we are ready to finally um, start putting things together and uh, running patterns to see where we're at. Now, if you recall, I used the original shim that was behind the pinion head bearing as a starting point. So I'm gonna start with that and then work my way around. Um, one last thing before I move on, I just wanted to show you guys up close what you need to do to get that cross pin to clear the ring gear tooth. So remember what I told you, the ring gear teeth, as you step up in gear size, the teeth get a little bit bigger and sometimes will get in the way of the cross pin. In this case here, it's exactly what happened. So if you look up close here, you'll see I shaved just a little bit of that off. But when you come down here, you could hardly see, you know, just a little bit of that shaved off. You don't get into the tooth to where it's gonna affect the pattern. And that is completely normal to have to do that. Now, my cross pin, just barely fits in there. I mean, I cleared just enough to get it to fit in there. I don't want to take off any more tooth than I have to, but as you can see, you're just shaving the top side of that tooth off in order to get that cross pin in there. So make sure you do that uh, um, before you discover the need when you're all done. And to be honest with you, that would have been easy to do um, prior to pressing the bearings on. I just got ahead of myself. So if you can think of doing that prior to pressing those bearings on, it makes it a little bit easier. All right, let's uh, get our first um, install and pattern run and see where we're at. So before I put the pinion in or anything else like that, I like to take just a little bit of gear oil, get it on the bearings. That way these things aren't running dry in there. You get good consistent patterns. And I'll do the same thing with the tail bearing. Just enough to lube them up a little bit so that way they're not running dry. All right, so as we get ready to put in the pinion, don't worry about putting on the crush sleeve or anything like that yet. You're gonna take your pinion, put it through here, have it seat inside the internal race. You're gonna take your tail bearing, put it on, and this tail bearing is an interference fit, so we have to get this flange on a certain amount so we can get the nut on here to drive that in the rest of the way, and the first time is always the hardest. But once you get that on there and you're able to get that nut started, then it'll drive that on there. And when you tighten this down, you want to tighten it down just until there's resistance. You don't want to crush your bearings, but you don't need to get to your preload spec yet. You just need drag on the bearings, in order to make sure there's no movement. So when you run your pattern, you're getting a good consistent pattern. So we'll get that on there. Um, you've, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I always uh, make a, what's called a setup nut. So this is the old nut here. I took a little sanding drum on my Dremel and I flattened out the threads just a little bit to take off the sharp edges. And that will uh, uh, keep it from galling the threads on the actual new pinion. So we're gonna start with that. You're gonna grab your, your flange here. You start driving away until it tightens up a little bit. Helps if I have my settings, right? So there's still just a little bit of movement. So I'm just gonna tighten it up enough until we get just a little bit of drag there. That's, that's probably pretty darn close to spec right there. I turn it one hand, 
There's no more movement. Now we can put the locker in, get the shims in, and uh, get our backlash set correctly. And if we're set correctly, we can run a pattern and see where that pinion's at. It's time to get the locker up into the housing here. Now, working on a Dana 44 or Dana 30, those are relatively light. This 8.8 is a beast, especially when you gotta work around this A or B line. On the other housings, I have old broken uh, seal housing, so the copper line's never my way. So as you're doing this, if you're installing an ARB, you gotta be very careful about that copper line and always pay attention to where it's at so you don't break that seal housing. Um, the other thing to note too is the master shims that come with the axle, depending on what shim kit you get, they're gonna be off a little bit. If you notice here, the master shims are smaller than what the actual um, machined out part of the housing is. The shim kit that uh, I got from Yukon is actually a perfect fit. So just keep that in mind as well when you're going to install stuff that if you get this all the way in here, don't think for a second that your, your uh, aftermarket shims aren't all the way in and you keep popping on them because you'll end up bending them. So make sure that that is uh, in the correct uh, uh, manner there so you don't bend them. The other thing to think about too is that the master shim has a bevel there and that makes it really hard to hold on to these and these at the same time. And uh, it's, it's really tight on the fingers. I'm telling you what, it's, it's a bear. I couldn't imagine doing one ton axles on, on a lift like this. That'd be a pain in the rear. But let's uh, um, get some starting shim stacks and just see where we're at. And we'll go from there. The other thing before I start lifting this up there, you gotta understand too, is when you have the oil drainage slot here and an oil slot up top, a lot of the times what can happen is you're gonna put this in, these both get in there and they fall and they don't wanna move forward. So you, as you're putting this in, I like to start low and work up into it so that way it's not getting into that notch. And even then sometimes it still gets me. So keep that in mind as you are uh, installing these that you can get caught in that slot and it becomes very frustrating. A lot of the reasons why gears are so frustrating to set up, it's, it's a puzzle and then you get little things like that that trip you up, so. Okay, so as you start getting it in there, it gets tight and it should because you want that preload. You remember when I pulled this out, there was zero preload. So now you have to start working it, making sure the shims are keeping up. As you start getting pretty tight like that, make sure it's not gonna fall out on you. You can take a little punch and slowly start working these shims in there is a chance you could bend these too and you don't want to do that. Probably look at the back of my head again. I've done that before in videos. Okay, well that one's not going to move on me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that in a little bit further. And uh, let's see. Why, you know what, I'm gonna pull that back out. There's nothing I can do to get that shim in there. So that's part of the frustrating game here. You can sit here and do this and the shim doesn't go in. And then all of a sudden you get the shim to go in, but something else is off. It becomes very frustrating. So you just have to keep after it, make sure things are going in at the same time and eventually you'll get the housing in there. It's another thing you gotta pay attention to. When you're striking this to make sure this thing gets in all the way, Make sure you're not hitting that copper line. Okay. I'm not gonna put my bearing caps on yet. Normally I do, but I just wanna get a rough idea of what my backlash is gonna be just so I'm not wasting time. In order to get accurate ba backlash, you need to have your bearing caps on, finger tight at least, but I just wanna get an idea. So this is showing me at five right now, and that is not spec. Spec for the Revolution gears is six to 
10. So I'm going to pull it back out, move a couple shims around, and uh, try again. See, after screwing around with it for a little bit, let me get my dial indicator back up here. This housing, if you notice here, normally there's holes here where you can put a case spreader in and open them up, but for some reason these are plug welded, so it doesn't allow my indicator to stick very well. So what I thought I was having a problem, I wasn't. I just need to get it set and keep it uh, consistent. So let me see where we're at now. So now we're at six. That is within spec, so I can paint a pattern. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put my ring gear bolts on and then check again just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. And uh, then we can paint a pattern and see where we're at. So after you get your paint on your teeth, I'll come around and I'll put on a glove and I'll hold the ring gear without catching that tone ring. You give it some friction so you get a good pattern. So looking at that initial pattern, it's pretty darn close, but it is shallow. So just by a little bit though, not by much, um, you'll see the little, I don't know if you can see, let me zoom in a little bit here. You see the little thin line of paint right at the top. That is showing that we are pretty close, but it's not wiping off. So that's just what's on top land. You want a thin uh, paint that's on the, the, the face of it there, just a real thin line. So pinion's got to come in just a little bit, and I think we'll be there. I bet you 3,000, so put us just about perfect. So let's pull everything apart, change out that pinion shim, put it all back together, and try again. Now, if you haven't watched any of my other re-gearing videos, um, I show a little trick on how to get the locker or the carrier out. If it has a proper amount of preload, it will not pull out by hand. So you'll see people put a crowbar in there and they struggle getting this thing out. It's real simple. If you take a box wrench, the size of the ring gear bolt, you put it on your ring gear, and you, you start rotating your pinion, it's gonna walk right out. But you gotta be real careful because you don't want this thing falling in your face. All right, I took the pinion shim to 35, so I added three thousandths to that. Got the carry reinstalled. Check backlash now. You wanna make sure that the plunger's not sitting on the tooth below it and that you're on the drive side of the tooth when you take your reading. You got your coast side which goes at an angle, your drive side's a little flatter, and that's where you get a good reading from. So, boy, these things are so temperamental. I'm at 11,000, so I gotta tighten up the backlash a little bit and get another pattern, so we'll be right back. So I have a backlash to nine, which is in spec. I'm not adding any paint to this brush. I'm just gonna re-smear the paint that's on there. Otherwise, it turns into a big old mess. Um, when you go to mix your paint, put some uh, gear oil in there, mix it up, and it thins it out and makes for a better reading when you do it.
It looks to be a good pattern, but it actually looks a little thin still. I don't know, it might be pretty darn close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pinion even deeper yet. So what I want to do is I want to go beyond what I think is good. That way I can verify. I call it bracketing. And you find out where it's too shallow, where it's too deep, then you know darn well you're somewhere in between there. So I'm going to, I'm going to add a couple thousandths more, make it too deep, and then uh, she'll be good to go from there. I haven't said it yet. I'm over this 8.8. .8. These things are heavy. They're pain in the butt to move around. Um, my problem is I'm tall, so I'd sit here with my neck completely crooked. I could imagine if you're on the concrete on your back trying to do this. The only way I'd ever do another one of these is if it's on a bench. I'm so tired of these. So we're right at nine, which is in spec. Let's uh, repaint the teeth and see where we're at. Here we go again. They never end up on the front side. Boom, there we go. That is it right there. So if you can see this pattern, actually I'm moving closer for you. See, we get that nice oval pattern. We have a little bit of a stripe at the top. So if I take my finger and wipe it, that would come off. Take a look at the drive side. Drive side's lining up the same way. So that pattern is good to go. Thank God I'm over this thing. So, all right, from here, we have to, um, we got to pull the locker back out. We have to set the pinion with the crush sleeve and the seal. So we have to get the pinion all set. And then we put the locker back in. We've got to make sure we run that airline where it needs to go as we put that thing in. So that makes it even more fun for those of you not installing an ARB. You're lucky. Um, and once we do that, we'll double check everything, run a final pattern, and, uh, and see where we're at. So before I even do all that, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint some teeth uh, in a couple other spots too just to make sure everything's where I want it to be. And uh, we should be good to go. Time for final pinion install. So we have our, our, our pinion here, our uh, shims are buried underneath the pinion head. So I don't have to take that off, I don't have to worry about shims behind the race on the inside. You wanna make sure you put your crush sleeve on, you're ready to do that. Um, the very next thing I will do is I'm gonna add a little bit of gear oil again to these bearings, actually a lot more than I did the first time. Cause I wanna make sure these get a good start and they're not running dry initially. So you get a good liberal amount in there. Same thing on the tail bearing. So the tail bearing, um, let me turn that over. Tail bearing will be sitting in there while I put in the seal, but I won't be able to get oil to it afterwards. I'm gonna do that now. So tail bearing in first. Put a nice liberal coat of oil. Even if it dumps out the front side of the housing, I'm fine with that. I want to make sure that this thing has plenty of lube. Next, we want to put our um, thrust washer there. And then we need to put in the seal. And the seal will go on, and then the um, pinion will shoot through the seal. We'll put everything together. So you got to make sure everything, you're doing all this at the same time. You, you kind of do a dry run through everything. Make sure you don't forget your space or make sure that you've already packed your, your lip of your seal with grease. If you want to add some RTV to your seal because you're prone to leaks, then do stuff like that. Make sure you get it seated all the way. Next, we're going to put our pinion through. Be careful because you got all the oil on it now, so it's going to be really um, slick. Looking for this thing where it went. You also want to put a little bit of oil on that as well, or grease, I'm sorry, on the uh, part there. Now, what I will do is I will take my setup nut still. I'm not going to use the regular nut just yet. I just want to get this thing started on here. And I'm going to use the setup nut for that.
and slowly run this on a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take my setup nut off and I'm going to put my final nut on. And this one here, I'm going to add red Loctite. And if you're not familiar with these, it might be, diff might be difficult to see. Let me see if I can get a focus there. You see how it looks a little bit oblong. And the reason that is, is this, this nut is a store type nut. It's oblong, so it has some clamping force. So they're considered one-time use nuts, and you don't want to reuse them. Some people do, I get it, but I'm not one of those guys. So now I will finish up with my uh, um, cheater bar and then I'll be checking torque as I do it. You said we have a little bit of room in there still. We got to get rid of all that first, start collapsing that spacer. And uh, once you get to that uh, spec that you're looking for, you're good to go. So for yokes, I'm sorry, for uh, flanges, I have a uh, flange holding device here which makes it nice. I welded a bar on here so it holds right up against the control arm. And I can just sit here and continue tightening now until I start getting uh, where I wanna be. So that just not quite bottomed out there, but it lets me know we are getting close. So I'm on the collapsible spacer now. I could feel it. And think about these collapsible spacers you need to understand is that you don't have to collapse it a whole lot to get to your torque spec. So once you get that play out of there, check every probably eighth of a turn. I mean, it doesn't take much. I'll go about like that right there, and then I would check. But until I get this play out of here, not gonna matter. Play's almost gone. And the problem with these, you over tighten them just a little bit, you gotta start all over with the new collapsible spacer. I don't think that's enough, um, but you gotta understand, you know, I'm only looking for 16 to 20 inch pounds and the weight of this bar is gonna help move it a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove these bolts. I'm gonna check it real quick to make sure, see if I'm getting any tension whatsoever, and then I'll have to put all this stuff back together. It's a big old process. The only thing we have to do now and I use that term loosely, the only thing, because it's a pain in the butt, especially the way the uh, guy who installed the ARBs run this line. I'm not a fan of having it come right off the same side, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna have to deal with it, but uh, we have to get this locker up here now, get it in place, and then make sure that the seal housing is facing straight out. So you saw when I was doing the other setup parts, it would end up up here, sometimes down here. So I'm going to have to try to adjust that thing on the fly. I may have to pull this in and out a couple times just to get it where I uh, want it. Um, I went through and I re-wiped out all of the bearing uh, uh, journals and all that to make sure everything's nice and clean. And uh, yeah, now for some fun.
So as I tried to install that last time, the shims don't, didn't go in all the way, and I bent a couple of them. So I had to pull everything out, go get some new shims, put new shims in there. So those things happen, part of the frustration that comes along with it, but now I got the new shims in there. Everything's uh, set up in there perfectly. Um, I got my bearing caps on. I've already gone around and, uh, and torqued them to spec. So those are all good to go. I need to move this copper line out of the way just a little bit because I'm gonna paint the teeth. I'm gonna run a final pattern, make sure everything's good. If you are um, gonna continue further on with an ARB, then you still need to run the line here and get that all set. But for anybody else, it's a simple matter now of removing that cross pin, getting the axle shafts back in, getting your C-clips in there, put your cross pin back in, make sure you put your gear roll in there and button it up. So um, that's it for the re-gear as, as a whole there. It's uh, fairly straightforward. Like I said though, this thing's kind of a pig. Um, and working under here kind of half bent over makes it uh, for a long day, but that is the gist of re-gearing that Ford 8.8. .8.